Hi, I'm Dan, and in this video, we're going to go through the process of upgrading a Bookstack instances on Ubuntu 22.04 to Ubuntu 24.04. Now the exact steps for this process can vary depending on a number of factors, like what Bookstack version you're starting with, what version of PHP you have installed, when you're doing this, because that then may affect what version of Bookstack you may want to be upgrading to, as well as what dependencies are available for PHP and your Ubuntu US and whether that's in support and things like this. So it's quite likely that your mileage may vary. I'm gonna show this process for the most common path where an existing Ubuntu 22 .04 instance installed via install script is being upgraded to 24.04 and I'm recording this in December of 2024 and the further you are from this date and this scenario the more issues that you might run into trying to exactly follow this process it should still always be possible in some sort of way but you might just run into a different set of issues or need to follow a different set of steps that i show in this guide right to set the scene of what i've done so far i've created a new vps instance on linode and i've ran our ubuntu 2204 installation script which has set us up with a bookstack instance that's version 24.10.3 which is the latest at the time of recording. And this is my Bookstack instance. You can see the version there. And I'm accessing this on the terminal in this window here. So don't worry if your Bookstack instance is older. Even though I'm on the latest version of Bookstack, I'm gonna go show you the process of when you should update. And so the general steps that we're gonna follow is we're gonna back up then back up again, then we're gonna perform the system upgrade, the Ubuntu update, and it's after then that we should then upgrade the Bookstack instance. Now in the current context of things, in the current time, I could upgrade the Bookstack instance now, but generally it's safer to upgrade afterwards. And this is because newer versions of Bookstack may have newer dependencies that newer operating systems are more likely to meet. Right, so step one, backup. It's immensely important that we have a safe, stable state to revert to if things go very much wrong. This is a dangerous operation upgrading your operating system, so it's crucial to ensure we have a point to revert to if needed. And so for the first type of backup, I'm going to strongly suggest having a system level backup. And so because I'm hosting this on a VPS provider, in this case Linode or Akamai Cloud, or whatever they call it these days, I can use some of their inbuilt tools. So I can go to backup and enable backups here. Or in my case, I've gone to storage and found the disk where essentially the whole file system is installed to and I've created a disk image. A lot of providers may label this as a snapshot or something like that. Pretty much all VPS providers that I've ever used should have something like this built in or other hosting providers hopefully have something similar. If you've got a physical machine and you're not running any kind of like virtualization system on there where you can perform an easy backup or snapshot then you can look to use something like Clonezilla to create a whole disk image and save that somewhere safe or you can maybe look to other operating system level backup options and now upon the system level backup I also want to make sure that we've got an application level backup so backing up the specific files and contents of the bookstack instance so if we go to backup and restore part of the documentation on the bookstack website it's got some guidance here but we can basically follow these commands if we've previously installed via the Ubuntu install script like we have but before we run these what I'm just going to do is go to a known place in the operating system so here in our Ubuntu instance I'm going to change directory to var www and then bookstack and now we're in our bookstack instance files and now follow this guidance so we can run this command and this is backing up the database contents so i'm going to paste this into here okay that looks like it's completed so one thing that's maybe good to do is make sure that's actually got some contents in there nothing went wrong so i'm going to do less and then bookstack.backup.sql and hit enter to open this in less. And there we can see a lot of MySQL data. So I'll press Q to quit. And now we'll come down to this command. And it's very important that we're in the Bookstack instance files before we run this one. And we'll run this. And this is gonna basically zip up all of the custom files for our Bookstack instance. So our config, our uploads, our attachments, and things like that. And that saves everything to a bookstack files backup.tar.gz file. So if I do ls and I'll do a dash 
lh to make this a nice list then we can see our sql back up there which is our database contents and then we can see our bookstack files back up here and then it's crucial that we copy these files out off of this machine because we're upgrading this machine that's where things could go wrong so if we lose the file system we don't want to also lose our backup files so how you do this is going to completely depend on how you connect to your system and maybe what operating system you use and what tools you use to access systems that you've got running i'm going to open up a new terminal window i'm going to cd into my downloads i'm going to make a new directory and then call this bs backup and then i'm going to copy the files via csp which copies files over ssh and so this was root at and now i need to find what ip address this system's at so that ip address and then the path and then the path was var www bookstack and now bookstack.backup.sql and then i'll copy this to the current folder by just doing dot slash here oh and i forgot a colon here there's that file and then i'll do the same for bookstack files backup.tar.gz so if i open this folder yep i see both of these files here. And again, I'll just open this to double check. It's got contents in. Yep, that looks good. And let's extract this to make sure this has stuff in too. There we go. So that has various folders and files. If I show hidden files, I should see a .env file, which is the configuration for our bookstack instance. So that looks like our backups are now safe and downloaded to our system. So I'll clear the terminal and now we can move on to performing the system upgrade now something you might want to do is especially if you've got a fairly busy bookstack instance and you don't want to control this at a different level like at the network level what we can now do is do system ctl stop apache 2.service oh and run that with sudo if you're not running as root as i am and what this will do is take down the web server that's hosting or running bookstack so this means we can no longer access it via the interface just so that we don't have users trying to do things that then maybe affect the instance as this update process is going on so before we perform the ubuntu upgrade we want to make sure the current version of ubuntu that we're using is fully up to date which you can do by sudo apt update and once that's done sudo apt upgrade and this prompts you to, if you want to install packages, you might have to type in a Y and press enter there to proceed with installation. And I've got nothing to install here because I've recently updated this instance just yesterday. But if you have a bunch of things there, what I suggest after the upgrade, it's probably a good idea to restart and then reaccess this machine before you perform the Ubuntu upgrade, just to make sure everything's in a safe, stable state. But now with our backups complete and our system fully upgraded, we can now proceed with the Ubuntu upgrade. So as I said, we're going to upgrade to Ubuntu 24.04. This is the latest LTS release at the time of recording, and that stands for long-term support. And I'd recommend that for server software and things that should be kept stable, that you stick to these LTS releases, because technically the latest release at recording of Ubuntu is 24.10, although this doesn't have long-term support support so let's start the process the ubuntu do have a guide on this themselves which you may want to go through because it does things like advising about disk space and checking release notes for issues and things like that but in general the main step after doing what we've already done is sudo do release upgrade so if we scroll up to where this started its output it does confirm that it's going to welcome to ubuntu 22.04 lts noble number so it looks like it's going to take us to that release which is good and so why for yes we do want to continue and hit enter and now because i'm accessing over ssh it's going to ask if we want to start another port just in case things go wrong so we'll hit yes now it's advising that it's going to open up on a different port so we need to make sure that that port is open if we need to connect externally hopefully we don't come to that so we'll just hit enter and if we do have any issues we'll just make sure we uh follow that and open up that port if needed to gain access as asking if we'd like to upgrade our software sources so we're going to hit yes for that okay now it's read the sort of package changes the changes in software that's going to be installed it's giving us a little output and asking us to confirm if we want to upgrade so i'm not 100 sure how fast the internet connection for this machine is it should be quite fast so i imagine i should be on the range of minutes but once you go on from beyond here you kind of want to make sure that you leave it you don't try and cancel things and you don't interrupt the connection so i'm going to hit y to continue and then we'll go through the process
Okay, so we've come to the first choice that is given us during this process. So it typically pops up for things like where you changed configuration files or where they have maybe been changed by your cloud provider and then it's got a different version than expected in the system packages. So in here it's referring to the SSHD config. So in this case, I'm going to choose to keep the local version currently installed just because there may have been changes made by the cloud provider to ensure access or add hardening. And I don't want to mess about with machine access. If you're totally worried, you could show a side by side difference and then take a note of the differences. But in this case, I'm going to keep the local version currently installed. And now we have another one from this case for Grub, which can affect how the system boots. So again, in this case, I would probably opt to keep the local version currently installed. Okay, and now it's asking us if we'd like to remove obsolete uh, packages, so packages that are no longer needed after the update. And I'll hear yes, just because we might as well remove them from the system to keep it clean and use less space. And now it's asking us if we'd like to restart to finish the update. So again, we'll press yes. And of course, because we're connected over SSH, we're now going to lose access because the machine is no longer turned on. So you'll wait for a moment and then I'll SSH back into the instance. Okay, it's been a minute, so I'll try and access it again via SSH. Okay, we're in. And we can see right at the top here, welcome to Ubuntu 24.04.1. So it looks like we have successfully upgraded. And before we have a look at anything on the system, let's double check if our BookSack instance is potentially running. So I'll refresh this. Okay, unable to connect. We did stop Apache, so it might just be that. So let's check the status of Apache, which we can do via sudo systemctl status apache 2.service. And we can press there Q to quit that if you get stuck inside this. But we can see this isn't, it's just stopped. This has failed. And we can see some error text here. If we wanted to get more log information, we can do that via sudo journal ctl then dash u then space and then apache 2.service this gives us kind of like a scrollable view where we can see lots of things so looking towards the bottom after the boot and the more recent times you can see we have this error that has got a syntax error on line 3 and it's relating to mods enabled php 8.1 so we know it's related to loading a php module so i'm going to hit q to exit this view now, this error tells me that it's trying to load this PHP 8.1 module, but as part of this update, I would have expected it to change the version of PHP. So if we do PHP-V to check the version of the command line PHP installed, then it's telling us that the command PHP cannot even be found. So it looks like something has gone wrong in regards to the updating or the handling of PHP during this process. So to remedy this, I'm going to reinstall the PHP requirements on this updated Ubuntu 24.04 system. So do sudo apt update first of all, just to update our repositories. And with that done, I'll clear the screen and then do sudo apt install PHP 8.3 and then php 8.3 hyphen then i'm going to use a little bit of shell syntax so curly brackets and these are going to basically expand out to be multiple items once we run this command and in here i'm going to enter a whole bunch of php extensions or extra packages that we want to install so i'm going to go fpm comma gd comma curl comma mb string comma ldap comma xml comma zip comma my sql so just as a reference i'm following our ubuntu 24.04 install script just uh, to remember what extensions to install and basically the way that i've defined it well when we run it will expand out to be the equivalent of this we're going to install the php 8.3 fpm package as well as the php 8.3 curl package and then so on so on so that's just an easier way to type it out basically so then i'll hit enter to run this and y to continue Okay, now with that done, let's see if we can do php-v now. Cool, and that comes out with some outputs and no more error, and we can see we've got php 8.3.6 at the time of recording. So we've got back, well, a newer version of php, but now we still need to fix Apache because that was still trying to use php 8.1. So let's disable its use of that php 8.1 module via sudo a2 dismod which essentially means Apache 2 disable mod. And you're going to do PHP, I think it's just 8.1 like that. Let's try that. There we go. Okay. 
module PHP 8.1 disabled. And now I'm going to follow the commands that are provided up here when we installed the PHP 8.3 FPM, because now we're going to switch over to using that instead of the old PHP 8.1 Apache module. We'll do sudo a2 en mod proxy underscore fcgi following this and then we'll also do space set env if and then we'll also do this command so sudo a2 en conf php 8.3 hyphen fpm technically php via fpm runs as a separate service so i'm just going to make sure that is enabled via sudo systemctl enable php 8.3 dash fpm dot service there we go. Now let's actually get that running by sudo systemctl start php 8.3 fpm dot service. Now I'm going to press up to get that command back. Now just change start to status just to make sure we can see what's going on there. And that's running. And now with that going, let's restart Apache by sudo systemctl restart patchy 2.service and now again i press up and then change that to status okay got a warning but that's quite a common warning We've got no error here and it is active and running so let's go back to the browser go to our instance tab and refresh wait and we've got everything running there so there's a couple of extra steps that I'd advise, even if your system looks to be running. So the first of those is to upgrade Composer. Now Composer is needed for the Bookstack installation and upgrade process. It handles the requirements of Bookstack itself. And it's a good idea to update this just to ensure it's on the latest version and that it's compatible with the version of PHP that you might have just updated to like we did. So we'll do sudo composer self hyphen update. And in our case, it's saying we're already on the latest version because I've only installed uh, Bookstack recently. But if you installed Bookstack originally quite a while ago, then you may have an update for Composer and just hit the prompt to let that continue and update your version of Composer. And with that done, the next step is to update our version of Bookstack. So go CD to change directory to slash var slash www slash Bookstack. Hit enter to get in there. And then we can go to the website and go to the updating Bookstack page and essentially follow these steps. So we'll paste these one by one, and we'll do this one by one rather than pasting in all the commands just so we know if it goes wrong, where it went wrong. So that first one ran with no errors and it said we're already up to date because again, this is the latest version of Bookstack. And we run this composer install step. And that doesn't do a whole lot, but it still did something and it ran without error. And this final one too. Okay, nothing to migrate because again, we're on the latest version. But again, you may have something more there if you're actually changing books like version. But either way, it's even if you kind of are on the latest version, it's still very useful to run these steps. For example, that composer install step may then flag up if you're not meeting any of the PHP extension requirements for Bookstack. So there still is some value in running those steps just to make sure everything's working, even if they're not actually going to update or change your instance. And now an optional thing which I would still strongly advise is to perform another system level backup again. So in our case, going to load and using their backups or potentially creating a snapshot or disk image, they call it in this case, just to have a useful recorded backup point for after you perform the upgrade when everything was all working fine. So I hope this video was useful in your own upgrade process. And I hope that you didn't run into any other kind of nasty issues along the way. But if you do run into any issues that you're finding a real challenge to solve, feel free to contact me or get help from the Bookstack community via either our GitHub or via the Bookstack Discord chat where myself or potentially someone else uh, should be happy to help and try and get you out of a stuck scenario. But otherwise, I hope everything went smoothly and have a wonderful day.